Hi everyone, this is Eliza Sidner Rahm here with part four of our series where we tackle the very large subject of how to teach a young horse to lunge. So I thought I would show you first more of the finished product. DW here already knows how to lunge quite well. If you haven't watched the previous videos where we talked about getting a good foundation through lots of groundwork, please go back and look at those before you think of teaching your young horse to lunge. Those building blocks have got to be in place before you start having this conversation with them. Lunging is going to lay the foundation for what I will expect under saddle. I'm not going to ride this horse until he lunges confidently in both directions, walk, trot, and canter, goes in forward working gates, does decently balanced transitions, and understands going round over the top line into a soft contact with the bit through the use of side reins. When my horse can lunge like that, I have an exponentially higher chance of having him understand me under saddle. A horse who lunges well already understands much of what we call the basics in dressage. They know how to go a steady tempo in all three gates. They know to stay relaxed and supple through their bodies. They understand and trust to push from behind to the bit. This is the basis of our training pyramid in dressage. And before I climb on their back, I need to know they understand those things, even if it is in a babyish way. Therefore, I need to take my time with the lunging. Even a talented horse like DW, who's been well handled since birth and has good ground manners, it will take at least a month, sometimes two or three, to teach all of those things through lunging. And if the horse is extra sensitive, has some bad handling in the past, or is just physically and or mentally immature, then you'll need to allow yourself extra time. So now that we've seen how I would like a young horse to lunge before I get on them, let's go all the way back to how I'm going to teach him this. First, I need to make sure he's not afraid of the whip. So we've done our good basic groundwork, and all I have on him here is the cavison, and I have a lunge whip, and I'm trying to make him stand still, which he's not very interested in doing, so that I can show you that I can touch him all over with the whip, the butt end of it, with it coiled up and now with it loose. I'm going to pull the flash all the way over his rump and he shouldn't mind any of this. If he's scared of the whip, I don't want to work on lunging quite yet. I want him to get used to letting this touch him all over his body. I'm not a big believer in a lot of desensitization, so I don't expect him to stand quietly while I crack the whip or while I have a plastic bag on the end and I'm waving it around. I just want him to be comfortable being touched. I teach young horses to lunge with two people to start with. My assistant, Kate, is gonna be the lunge line person, and that person has a big job, so they need to be a good horseman or woman that understands how to lunge. And they don't have to wear a helmet, although it could never hurt, but definitely have gloves on. Then I'm gonna go out with him and show him the circle. We're pretending here that he's never been lunged in his life, and we're showing him the edge of the 20 meter circle, walking around with him, and I'm leading him like normal. And Kate's trying to stay right in the middle of the circle near X. Next step is trying to move away from him and keep him out. But I'm going to stay close to him, much closer than I would if I were lunging all by myself. So as I try to push him out there, he got a little confused. And it's going to be much easier to let him go ahead to trot. It's hard to teach a horse to lunge at the walk. So I let him go ahead to trot, even though I didn't really ask for that. And I start walking about halfway out the lunge line to him. If he were to fall in, I would push the lunge whip gently at his shoulder or even underneath the line and out towards his nose. Or I would walk up the line towards his shoulder. Kate's job is to stay really at the center She's like the pivot point of a compass, describing the circle and limiting how far out he can go. And if the lunge line gets droopy because he's fallen in, her job is to pick it up. Then when we're done lunging one direction, I'm going to ask him to halt out at the end of the lunge line, walk him back into Kate, and then we'll try to go the other way. I always try to remind myself that 
I understand what I want. I know what lunging is. But this young horse, probably a three-year-old at this point, has no idea what lunging is. Why would he know what lunging is? Horses don't come out of the womb knowing how to go around you in a circle at a steady pace in all three gates. So this takes quite a while for them to understand and for them to think, oh, I get it. You want me to stay out on a circle and keep going at the walk and the trot and the canter. But initially, there's lots of problems that you run into when you teach a young horse how to do this. The most common problem is the horse hitting the end of the lunge line, spinning around and stopping and looking at you head on, or possibly spinning around and going the other way. When this happens, no matter how many times it happens, you quietly walk out to the horse, turn him back in the direction you want him to go, lead him a few steps, and start again. It often happens in the same spot every time on the circle because they don't want to turn away from the barn, let's say, and so you're going to need to be extremely patient with this problem. The other thing that commonly happens is that you'll get the horse out towards the end of the lunge line and then they'll be quite excited that they're sort of all on their own out there and they'll take off and start cantering and then running. I usually try to let them go for a little bit unless it's truly dangerous. If they're galloping so much that I'm worried they're going to slip and fall or hurt themselves, of course, I'll start to pull the lunge line in until I can get them to stop. But if they're just a little excited because they don't quite understand, I usually let them go for a little bit, maybe five to six circles, before I begin to decrease the size of the circle and bring them back in to a trot, at which point they probably are going to stop and spin around and look at me. So we just start again, quietly go back out, or maybe go back to walking them on the edge of the circle a couple times until they can calm down a bit. After lunging with an assistant for about a week, but again, it depends on your horse. Some go slower, some go faster. I'm ready to start trying to lunge on my own. Now I'm going to try to be the center point that doesn't move too much, although I can't stand stock still with a horse this young yet. I'm still lunging him in only a cavison because I don't want to add any complications of other tack quite yet. And I'm going to ask him to go walk and trot and canter if he's balanced enough. If he's still too excited or he's just a very, very gangly, unbalanced horse, sometimes canter is not the best idea. Not only will they often not pick up the correct lead or they'll disunite a lot, it just makes them a little bit too excited. But if they're able to canter, even for just half a circle or one circle, I'd really like them to canter because I want them to start learning that they have three gates, they go every single day, and it's not a big deal to canter. Your most important aids at this point are your body language and your voice. I cannot overemphasize the importance of voice. The most common mistake I see are people that are too quiet or that just use the words with no intonation behind them. Me telling him, trot, trot, does not make sense to him. He does not speak English. But me telling him, trot, sounds like something he would like to go forward from. And vice versa, me saying, walk, walk, doesn't really make any difference. But if I say, and walk, that sounds like something he would like to slow down from. So whatever word you use is fine. You don't have to tell the horse to canter in the same way. You don't have to tell them to walk in the same way, as long as you are consistent with that horse. I like to use the trill to slow them down, but of course not everyone does that, and that's totally fine. I like to use the word canter to have them pick up the canter, but a lot of other people use the kiss noise and that's fine. Whatever you do that's consistent, the horse will learn to respond from. Remember our next step is riding this horse and your voice is going to be just as important under saddle. If they can learn to respond to specific voice commands, they will be your most helpful aid under saddle as well because you will use them exactly the same.
Sometimes one of the most difficult moments is getting the horse to begin to lunge in a new direction. So I always recommend that people walk forward with the horse for a few steps, like I'm doing here, especially to the right, because we don't often lead them from the right side. So horses get a little confused this way more often than to the left. And then as soon as he's out a little ways, let's say to a 10 meter circle, I'm gonna go ahead and ask him to trot. Because again, it's very hard to get a horse to go out all the way to a 20 meter circle in the walk, especially a green horse. You might be able to hear me say to him, out, out. I use that as an aid along with my whip towards the shoulder or my whip underneath the lunge line towards his nose. And you can also use a shaking lunge line like a snake at them although I find most horses don't like this technique but I have met a few in my life who respond well to that. Falling in on the lunge line is probably the most common fault I see in lunging even in more mature horses so I really want to talk about it for a little bit here. The reason it's so important to go out to the end of the lunge line is not only for their joints so that they're on as big a circle as possible, but also so that they begin to learn to take contact with the lunge line. This is the same contact that you will want them to take with the bit later on. So I really want to begin to implement this idea early on. If my horse consistently falls in on a 15 meter or smaller circle, the best way I can explain to push them out is to think of the circle like a wagon wheel. And I'm going to walk up the spokes of the wagon wheel towards the horse in the moment that they fall in. Most horses consistently fall in in the same spot on the circle oftentimes going away from the barn and then bulging out towards the barn. So that's a good thing because we can plan for it. So when they come around the circle on the side that's going away from the barn and they tend to crash in, I go ahead and walk up one of the spokes of the wagon wheel at the horse and then up the next spoke of the wagon wheel. I don't want to end up walking around in a big circle. I really want to think of walking up a spoke and then back to the center, up a next spoke, back to the center. My body language is pushing that horse out away from me and then I come back to the center point. If you have the opposite problem and the horse pulls on the lunge line and bulges out, you often need to think of turning them on more of a polygon, like a hexagon or an octagon. I use the lunge line to turn them with a tug and release, tug and release. If I pull on it steadily, it's gonna very likely make them spin into me and stop or then go the other way. Another common problem, especially if the horse is very relaxed and trusting, is that you can't get them to go forward on the lunge line. So with this problem, I would go back to trotting in hand and teach them trot or whatever the word is that you use, that they understand that that means to trot off. And then when you're on the lunge line and you have the whip person send them forward, as soon as they pick up the trot, I use that word trot so that they start to put two and two together. I always think of Annie Sullivan and Helen Keller. <laughs> like they pick up the trot and I say trot, and they didn't really trot because of me, but I said it as they were trotting. And then I said canter as they happened to pick up canter. They learn this way to think, oh wow, I did the thing and she said that word and eventually they put two and two together. Safety in lunging is so important. You really wanna practice with your equipment until you feel confident in handling the lunge line and the lunge whip. And if your horse is ready to wear tack and is comfortable with that, I wanna show you how I do up the reins of the bridle, twisting them and then putting the throat latch, or in this case, the eye strap of this Micklem bridle through that and then connecting it so that the reins are twisted and then I've tied them to the bucking strap of the saddle to secure them so that if the horse put its head down, like DW often does, they wouldn't flip over his head. So there's where I have it, the reins connected to the bucking strap. 
And then if your horse is ready to wear a saddle and you want to do the stirrups up so that they don't bang on his sides, this is the way I do the stirrups up so that I secure them so they don't flap. You need to have a long enough stirrup leather to do this, or you can always just remove the stirrups from the saddle. An important part of lunging for me is teaching the horse to go in side reins, very long at first, of course, and then gradually a little bit shorter, but I would never introduce them until the horse is quite good at lunging and confident in lunging. The first time I do them up, I do them this way. I've got the outside one done up, now I walk forward with him and do the inside one up as he's moving and then go ahead and send him out and go ahead and send him into trot fairly quickly. The most dangerous moment with side reins is doing them up at the halt and then asking the horse to walk off. That's the only time I've ever run into the problem of a horse hitting the side reins, panicking and almost flipping over backwards, which I really hope never happens to any of you. I always start with the side reins quite long at first. As you can see here, they are not pulling him in. He can still go above the bit, but when he comes down a little bit round, he meets the contact in a nice way. And as he gets more comfortable, I would shorten these three to four more holes, which will still not be short. He will not be in a collected frame at all, but he will get used to going steadily round before I climb on his back. So this is a lot to cover in one session, and from teaching a horse to lunge for the first day to getting to this point is going to take quite a long time. So please give yourself and your horse time to figure it out. And when they make a mistake, just be patient, help them out, start again. They will figure it out, I promise you. Next video, we're going to get into what I'm sure all of you really want to hear about, which is how to ride this horse and sit on his back. So please subscribe for more videos.